Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to automatically check your plot files as they are created to make sure that they're valid and don't contain any errors. In other words, as soon as the Chia plot creation process is done and it renames the file from .temp to .plot, a event will occur that will automatically check this plot file to see if it's valid. So basically, it will run the command line tool chia.exe plots check and give it the full path of the plot and see if that plot is valid or not. Now this will work no matter how you're creating the plot files. If you're using the Chia GUI, using uh, something like a plotting manager like SWAR or the PSGA plotter that I created, no matter how you're creating these plot files, it should work. Because whenever the plot file is finished copying over to the final destination, it'll be renamed from with a temp to the plot and then when, whenever this gets renamed, the method that I have for checking these automatically will be invoked. So if I click yes to rename it, you can see that a CSV file was created in the same directory as the plot file. And you can see that the Chia executable has started to check this plot file that just got copied over. Now once this is done, we can open up that CSV file and see the information inside. Okay, so now that the Chia executable has finished checking the plot, we can open up the CSV file to see which information it grabbed. So we can see the number of proofs it found with the challenges. So the, it does the default challenges of 30 and it found 39 proofs. It gives you the ratio. So if this is below 0.7, then you might wanna go ahead and test this plot again with a higher challenge rate. Now this is just an example. So I just did a K size 25. Do not plot with uh, 25 K size, they will not farm and then it gives you the plot ID, and if it does contain any errors when checking, it will also list those out right here. Now this can be extremely helpful if you have a plotting manager and you're creating, let's say, 30 plots a day, well, you can automatically check them, and then you can check this log file uh, maybe once a day to see if any are invalid, and you can quickly de delete those by checking the plot ID. Now I have made this very simple to set up by making a single function that will create this little automatic watcher. So the function is called new test plot watcher and then you give it the path to the uh, plot directory that you want to watch and automatically check for validation of these plots. Now this will only run while this PowerShell window is open so if you close this window then the event watcher will stop and you will not automatically check the plot files. So just keep that in mind if you are running this function not to close the PowerShell window that you ran it in or the event watcher will stop. So in order to run this command, you will need to install my module called PSG Plotter, and you can follow the instructions on my GitHub and I'll leave this link uh, in the description below. So the install instructions are pretty simple. You just run this command. If you already have it installed, you'll just need to update it. Um, and also, if you're unable to run the commands once you installed it, you might have to change your execution policy. Now, I won't be going over the actual function of checking your plots in great detail in this video because I covered it pretty well in a previous video, how to check Chia plots using the command line tool and PowerShell. And you can read more about this, uh, this Chia command line tool uh, on their documentation and I'll leave both of these in the description below as well. However, I will go over the code that I wrote to write this tool. So if you do need to customize it to your environment, you can do so. Okay, so let me just quickly demonstrate real fast from start to finish how you would use this tool. So the first thing that you want to do after you install the module is do new test plot watcher and then give it the path of where the final destination of these plots are going to be. So in my case, it's going to be this test farm to path. So once I do that, it has started watching this directory. So now let me go ahead and create a test plot. So I'm going to open up my PSG plotter and I'm going to do a new job and do a basic test. So this will create a new plot in that final directory that I just created the watcher for. So I'm going to click start job and then once this job has finished we can see it automatically, automatically generate that CSV file that we saw in the beginning and check the validity of this plot that gets created. Okay, so you can see now that the file is being copied over and then once it deletes the TMP and renames it to .plot, you will see the CSV be automatically created. And now that it's done checking the plot, we can open up the CSV file and we can see that we get the ratio, the challenges, just as we did before. 
Now real quick before we get into the code, I will say if you do want to end the automatic uh, event watcher, you can do get event subscriber and then pipe it to unregister event and that will stop it from looking at any more plots or uh, watching that directory. Okay, so let's go from the Chia command line tool. So Chia plots check. Now this is the function that we're actually running to check if the plot is valid from the end product that I just showed you. Now at any point, it seems like I'm going fast in this video and I don't cover enough. Again, refer to my previous videos to get up to date. So if we run Chia plots check on the plot that we just ran it on for the automatic check, you can see that it outputs a mess of text. And so basically, how do we convert this into the CSV that we ended up with? Well, you want to basically pull out the important information. So obviously this information is important. So this includes the number of proofs found, the number of challenges it was sent, and the ratio of that. And then of course from the plot file itself, we can grab the case size and the plot ID. So how can we parse this wall of text to grab the important information out of it, like the ratio, in order to create a PowerShell object and then export that to a CSV? Well, your first instinct might be to pipe this to select string so that we can select the lines that have the information that we want, like this line right here. However, this actually does not work for this command. So if we do select string and then do a simple match and try to grab all lines that say proofs and we click enter, you can see that it gives us the same output as before. It doesn't filter anything out and except now that the text is green. So why didn't our select string pick out the line with the proofs in it? Well, it might not look like it, but this text, all this text right here, actually got outputted to the error stream. So all the data that is created when an error occurs gets put into a separate stream than whenever successful information gets put out. Now, I don't know why this command is written like this, but it seems to be the case. So let me go ahead and show you another example of this. So if we write our own little error and we do a message called test message, you can see that it outputs this to the console. Now if we try to select the lines uh, that it outputs, like we did before with our Chia plots check command, you can see that it outputs everything. Now we can actually redirect the stream that is put into the error stream to the success stream by doing this little thing right here. So we can do the two, which represents the error stream, and then the greater than sign and ampersand, and then the one, which represents the success stream. And then if we do select string, and then do the simple match test, you can see that we grab the one line that says test message. Now let's go ahead and try that on our previous command, the Chia plots check command. So let's go ahead and add the two greater than symbol ampersand and one, and then let's do simple match proofs. And you can see now we actually grab the one line that we wanted. Now you can do a bunch of cool things with redirecting streams to other streams. And if you want to learn more information, you can go to the PowerShell About page on the redirection of streams. And I will post this in the description as well. But basically, we got the functionality that we need to parse the Chia check plots uh, command. OK, so now that we have the ability to parse this text that gets outputted by this command, we can write a function that pretty much is a wrapper around this to grab all the important information out and output an object. Now, I've already done this, and I called it a, a function called test chia plot. Now you're going to give it the path. You can also give it the same thing that we did here with the dash g, so it doesn't have to be the full path. So I'm just going to copy the same one that we have here, here. And then if we hit enter, you can see that it outputs an object. So it gives us the path, the plot ID. Now it does have the full plot ID if you expand out this object. And then it gives you the uh, proofs and challenges, the ratio. I have it colored green if it's above 0.7, the case size, and the error count. Now the error count is actually uh, a list of the errors. So if we do uh, format list, this will put the object in a list form. You can see that this is the full path. And then you can see that the proofs found in the challenges are actually two separate properties. I just have them combined because I think it looks better if you're, if you're just glancing at it real quickly. And then you can see that the errors is actually a list. So this just shows you the total count of the errors, if any, were found. Okay, now I'll quickly go over how I wrote this function and how I generated an object from the text that we saw above. So if we go to the function, 
you can see where I defined the variables that we use. So here's the path variable that I gave, and it actually accepts an array. So you can give it more than one path or partial path. And then you can see another variable that we actually didn't use because the default value is 30. However, you can change this default value if you need to. Now the next thing that we want to look at is the beginning of the function. And here we grab the full path of the Chia command line executable folder so that we can add it to our environmental path variable so that we can call it directly just by doing chia.exe as we see here. And then we will define the strings that we want to pick out of the string that's outputted or the output stream of this command right here. And we want to put those into functions just to make things very neat. Okay, so now that we have the beginning part summed up, let's look at what happens with each of the path or each of the strings that we give to this variable right here. So we're basically creating a for each loop. So we're running these commands one at a time on each string in this array. So the first thing that we're going to do is run the chia plots check command with the number of challenges that you gave it for this variable. The default is 30. And then we're doing the dash g just as we did in the console. This is why you can give it a partial path. And we're giving it the, the string one at a time, of course. And then we're doing the same thing to redirect the error stream to the success stream so that we can select the, the strings or from the output. So we're doing the same thing that I showed you before. We're selecting the string and we're grabbing all lines that have the word proofs, error, and testing. So if any of the lines of text contains any of these three words, then it'll be piped to a for each loop where we run a switch statement on it. And then the dollar sign underscore is where this line is being stored in the pipeline. So now what a switch statement does is basically it does commands if a certain conditional is met. So we're doing a regex. So basically we're saying if this line in the pipeline matches the regex or matches this string, um, then run the commands in the script block right here. So in this case, if the line matches this, then run these commands and then break out of the switch uh, command and then go to the next line that passes this select string. Now let's go ahead and look at the output of this command right here so we can see which lines that we're grabbing and how I'm parsing them. So if we go back here and we scroll up, we can see that the first line that we grab is actually the testing plot. And even though this is on two lines, it grabs it as if it's one. And we're, so basically we're grabbing this whole line right here and this is the only value that we want. So here you can see you know, this line will pass because we are grabbing all lines with the word testing in it. And then the testing regex right here will be triggered um, and then everything in this script block will be ran. So starting at the top of the script block, we're basically grabbing the line that contains the full path of this plot. And then we're splitting that path into a leaf. So this will grab the file name by itself without the directories that it is in. And then from the file name, we can grab the K size since that is stored in the file name. So here you can see that the K25 is right here. And then here you can see the plot ID. So the next thing that we grab is, of course, the plot ID. So I'm basically just doing some string manipulation right here. Um, so I won't go into detail about that. And then from there, since this is the first uh, switch that will get triggered on each plot that you give it, um, we are creating an object. Now the first property of this object is actually just a property that you won't see and this is just to use for the formatting of the object when it's displayed in the console. So the real first property is the path. So here we're giving it the value and the plot path. So this is the full path. And then we're just pretty much setting little temporary values for the proofs found, the ratio, and then we're giving it the challenges, and then we're giving it also the plot ID. I don't know why there's a little yellow squiggle. That shouldn't be there. And then here we're creating a new list object so that we can add any errors that we come across. Okay, so now let's go back to the output of Chia plots check. So if we go back here, we can see that the next line that it'll probably grab is the proofs line. Now, if there are any errors, it'll probably grab those first and then the proofs line. But in this case, there are no errors in this plots uh, check command. But just for sake of demonstration, let's pretend that there are some lines that contain, instead of info, the word error. Well, then this 
uh, switch conditional would get triggered and then it will just add that entire line to the error list that we created right here. And then once all the errors are gathered, um, it will then finally make it to this proofs line and then it will grab uh, this number of proofs found and the ratio number right here and it will basically give the properties that we put a placeholder for the actual values that the chia plot check command uh, provides. So once these properties are filled in with their actual values, we uh, output the object to the console and then we break out the switch statement. The rest of the lines will not uh, trigger the select string. So this for each will basically not be triggered again. And then it goes through the rest of the strings in the path uh, variable until it has completed. Okay, so now that we have the test uh, chia plot function figured out, let's go ahead and look at the other function, new test plot watcher. Now this function is actually very simple. Again, we give it the path for the directory, so we want to validate that this path actually exists. So we give it this uh, little validate script to make sure that it is a directory path that exists. And then here we basically create a new system IO file system watcher. We give it the path uh, provided in this variable, and then we give it a filter string. So any of the file names with the extension.plot, it will trigger on. And then we make sure that the enable raising events is equal to true, and then we don't want to look at subdirectories. And then from there, we want to basically give it an action every time that the file watcher triggers. So this is going to be the action, and we give it a script lock. So the event variable is actually an automatic variable in PowerShell that stores all the information about what triggered the event and uh, just context for the event itself. So here we're grabbing the source event uh, arguments and the full path that triggered the event. And then we're storing that in a variable called plot path. If this plot path ends with dot plot, then we will run the script block uh, in the if statement. So we want to grab the parent directory so that we can create the CSV full path. So we do a split path on the full plot path and grab the parent. And then we join that path with the child path plots check.csv. And then we run the command that we just talked about, test chia plot. We give it the full path and then we export that to a CSV and we make sure that we do dash append so that we don't override it every time that this event is triggered. Now the last thing that we do is register object event. We give it the object that um, that will generate the events. We give it the action that we want it to perform when these events get triggered and then we want to give it the event name. So the event name in this case is renamed because this is what happens whenever the uh, Chia creation process has finished. And then the source identifier is just a way that you can uh, tar target out this uh, object event uh, so that you can unsubscribe to it if you want, or you can do it how I showed earlier in the video. So I basically give it the path dash watcher. Now I know I kind of sped through this very quickly and I, I do realize that some of this stuff is a little bit more advanced and my other videos but I just wanted for those who were curious of how I created these functions to give them a little bit behind the scenes um, and feel free to go to the github and if you just want to copy the functions instead of installing the entire module you can go to the PSGA plotter go to public and go to test chia plot and then you can just copy and modify it however you want now if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below if you have any issues feel free to create an issue on my github now i, I can't 100 percent say that i'll fix the issue i will eventually look at it um, i do do this in my part time just for fun and just because i enjoy working in powershell and also i enjoy giving back to the community as I think it quite needs it right now. And the last thing I want to mention is that I've done a lot of updates on the PS Chia Plotter Manager, basically the GUI to help you manage your Chia plotting process. So if you haven't updated in a while, I do recommend it because there have been a, a lot of features that I have added. All right, thank you. Bye.